Forced to work from home by your employer? Laid off or feeling depressed at home? Do you want to make money working from anywhere? We'll show you how to do it from your couch. It's time for another episode of the Work From Home Show. Coming to you from their homes in Austin, Texas and Tampa, Florida. Here are your hosts, Adam and Naresh. Hey everybody, welcome to the Work From Home Show. Shout out to all our homies, homeboys, homegirls, home trans, all the Work From Homers out there. I'm Naresh. This, uh, today we have Victoria Gallagher on the show. She is a certified master hypnotist. NLP trainer, transformation meditation teacher, and law of attraction expert specializing in career and business success as founder of hypetalk.com. That's H-Y-P talk.com. Victoria creates effective self-help and meditative recordings delivered through her online courses, audio programs, and live seminars. She is a number one best-selling author of Practical Law of Attraction, Align Yourself with the Manifesting Conditions, and Successfully Attract Your Desires. Victoria Gallagher, thank you for joining us on the Work From Home Show. Yes, thanks, Narash. Thank you so much for having me on the show. This is one of my favorite topics, uh, being somebody who's worked from home for the last 24 years. So thank you so much for having me as a guest. Well, we've had one, someone who called themselves a hypnotist on a while ago, very okay. long time ago. So I want to talk a little bit about that. We've also had several experts on the show who specialize in the law of attraction. So we're certainly going to get into all of that as well. But I first want to start with you a little bit more about your background. You said you've been working from home for 24 years now. Tell us how you got into this field of law of attraction and hypnotism. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's, it's actually been kind of a little bit of a disjointed journey, um, because I, you know, I really, I really started, um, thinking about, you know, just our own ability to, um, create our own reality at a, at a super, super young age when I was about, you know, eight years old, I, um, basically I put it out there to the universe that, um, after seeing the sixth graders, I was like eight years old. So I was like a second grade, first grade. And after seeing the sixth graders put on the wizard of Oz, um, I said to myself, I said to the universe, I just made it, you know, abundantly clear. I set my intention that I was going to play Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz. And so year after year, I just kept, you know, seeing the sixth graders put on that play. And I was like, yep, that's going to be me. That's going to be me. And then I manifested that, you know, it was the very first experience with manifesting something um, was in the sixth grade when I got to play Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz. And then fast forward to about 18, like after I got out of school, even though like that happened, you know, that happened because I was, uh, you know, kind of like the kid that was sort of, you know, low self-confidence, made fun of, um, all of that. And, you know, that was just that empowering moment for me. But my mom sent me this book called Total Self-Confidence um, when I was 18 and, you know, graduated from uh, high school. And that book talked all about our ability to create our own reality. And, They talked about self-hypnosis. They talked about law of attraction in that book. So that was like my first real exposure to like those terms. And then fast forward to, you know, another 10 or so years later, after I had been a stockbroker for about six years, um, working for one of the most popular, um, you know, brokerage firms on Wall Street pretty successful, making a six-figure income, I really started to question whether I was in the right industry, the right field. I just wasn't feeling passionate about it anymore. And so I that led me to taking um, some, you know, weekend, four-day um, personal development seminars. And so I went to the seminar called Size Seminars, and it just completely 180 degrees 
turned me around. And basically, I decided at that moment that I wanted to, you know, help people more on a um, personal development foundation. And, you know, and that led me to becoming certified in hypnosis as a way, as a modality to, you know, help people to achieve their dreams and goals. And um, I was kind of put on the spot af- as, as a stockbroker where I wasn't making any money yet um, in my new <laughs> endeavor. I mean, I'd like literally just opened up an office and um, started getting the business license paperwork together and my boss found out what I was doing. He gave me an ultimatum, basically told me I had to make a decision. So right there on the spot, I made a decision to leave my six-figure job and completely start over from scratch with nothing um, to start my own business. And, you know, I was just like, I'm going to manifest it. You know, I'm going to use a law of attraction. And... um you know, and it, it didn't work out so well for the first couple of years. And the first couple of years, I really, really struggled. And I just had to like, really muster up as much belief as I could in myself. And I, you know, I had realized that along the way to building that business, um, I wasn't doing all the things that got me to that point, like I wasn't doing the hypnosis or the meditation or the journaling or all the things I was like kind of in a fight or flight mode where I was just uh, working around the clock, you know, trying to figure out how am I going to get this business off the ground? And finally, one day it just all like broke down and I got down on my hands and knees and I just you know, it's not like I sort of had like this spiritual experience where I realized, oh my God, you know, I am so not taking my own medicine. And so it it was at that point where I really decided to take my own advice, start doing the hypnosis and the meditation and really applying it. And, um, that's when my business turned around and, you know, um, I always talked about these principles called manifesting the law of attraction, magnetic energy, all of that was always part of like my hypnosis conversation. And when I started like really putting myself out there on, you know, Facebook and doing lives and doing videos, and I just was talking about the law of attraction a lot. And because it was just something that was already in me for, you know, then the secret came out. And that's when that really started to gain a little bit of validation. And, you know, so a lot of people just said, you should write a book about it. You know, so much. And so I did. (laughs) And it became number one bestseller. And from there, I started writing a lot more books. And um, now my cat's gotten involved in writing books uh, along with me. I've got a new book coming out on Monday called My Cat's Secret to Manifesting, Unlocking Law of Attraction with Your Magnetic Power. (laughs) That sounds cool. What does your cat have to do with that? (laughs) Well, you know, here's the thing. Um, So I, you know, I love this cat velvet so much and, you know, and, and he's so magnetic and he's so charming and he's just so irresistible. Like you can't help to just go and like want to touch him and, and pick him up and, you know, and, and he gets everything he wants. From him. <laughs> and so I thought, you know, cats at ju- have a way of being very magnetic, you know, at, just naturally, they're naturally that way. And so I thought, you know, I, I want to like really sit down and, and think about like, what is it about them that makes them so magnetic. And, you know, it, it's this, this whole presence thing is their energy. It's their focus. It's their, you know, and, and so I started really looking at all of these different character traits and how we can look at cats and we, and we can ultimately, if we emulate a lot of these person, you know, these, uh, personality traits that most cats seem to possess, 
we can become just as magnetic and attract things to ourselves. Um, so it's kind of a, a different, uh, type of book from, you know, my practical law of attraction. Um, because, you know, I, I do talk a little bit about the steps to manifesting in this book. Um, but this one was written based on the, his perspective, Velvet's perspective uh, and him sharing with me his insights about you know, all the various different, um, practices, mindfulness, presence, magnetism, surrendering, you know, all the things that they do that make them so magnetic, um, to attracting their desires. So I want to go over some key terms because I think a lot of the general population, when you say words like, magnetism when you say use a term like law of attraction they're not familiar with it and and i personally i mean i've been reading and following self-help self-transformation for maybe 12 years now yeah and i only i don't know why but i finally understood law of attraction i would say maybe five years ago uh, okay. around 2018 yeah so i'm sure there's a ton of listeners right now who are like they keep saying law of attraction is this like a, a <laughs> dating term like what what exactly <laughs> is this and and i will say because you did bring up the secret yeah i really learned about the nitty-gritty of law of attraction by reading and watching the secret and i believe it's available on netflix whether you agree with it or not I do highly recommend you watch it on, on Netflix. If you don't have time to read it, there's, it should be on Netflix, the documentary, The Secret. Yeah. And if I were to sum it up in one sentence, it would be believe and it will come. Ooh. You know what? I love that. And as a matter of fact, um, that's the name of my new app that's going to be coming out in Ooh. July. And I hate to sound all promoty or anything, but you literally just said the name of the word, you know, the name of my new app that's coming out is called Believe. Um, and, and obviously it's because you're right. Um, it is all about, um, getting yourself to believe. Um, now, you know, you can believe all day long if you don't take action on those things. It's not, you know, going to happen. So you do. And that's one of the things like the secret is a really good starter for a lot of people, um, to just open their mind to start to, um, get curious about, you know, what is this thing, uh, you know, called law of attraction? What is it capable of bringing to you? Um, but, you know, I will say that the law of attraction doesn't really have uh, the, like the practical side of things. And so that's where my book, Practical Law of Attraction comes in. But you had asked, um, my uh, definition of law of attraction, um, is basically that, you know, it's a, it's, it's about aligning your thoughts, your feelings, your beliefs, um, and your actions with your desire. Um, because all of those ultimately, if you are, you know, uh, if you have a desire, but you're just, you know, you're constantly like thinking negative thoughts about it and thinking about what you don't want, you're going to push it away. If you have a desire and even though you might be thinking positively, um, uh, if you don't have the feeling, if you're just kind of going around, um, sort of feeling like this, you know, low vibe, um, you know, you're not, you're, you're just not going to be in, uh, you know, have enough manifesting power to bring about your, your reality. Um, if you are not taking action, you know, clearly you're just not going to manifest. And then, but most importantly, I think the thing that will get all of those really together is, is that belief. If you, if you entirely 100% believe that you're going to manifest, then you're going to take action. You're going to feel good. Um, your thoughts are, you know, going to line up. So it is to me, it's like the single most important thing you can do is to work on the, the beliefs. And at the same time, it is the hardest thing in the world to do. And that's why we use hypnosis, um, is to tackle the, 
you know, the counter beliefs that we have to our desires. We'll get to the the hypnosis part in a little bit, but sticking on law of attraction, there's a misnomer that, oh, if you just keep telling yourself something, it's going to happen. If you believe something just completely out of the blue, it's going to happen. No, you, I, to me, because I, I use law of attraction and before I even knew what law of attraction was, I, I, I used it. And, and I really do think that if you believe whether it's, let's say you've got a big medical board exam that you're going to be taking, if you're a young person and you're studying and you're studying and you're like, man, I really know this stuff. Like I really, I'm going to ace this test. Like I really do believe that because I know my stuff. It's more along those lines than, let's just say, somebody who uh, prays every day for something that's just unattainable or that's just you're you're not working towards it or or whatnot. Um, that's not really realistic. Uh, an, an example, I mean, I can give examples in my own life, but I know Kanye West, for example. I think this is a really good example. When he was a late teenager in his early to mid twenties, he knew that he was an amazing, uh, lyricist and an amazing entertainer and rapper. He, he just knew it. How did he know it? Because he would see the people who made it and compare their stuff to his stuff. And people told him, Hey, like you are really good you are really good you just haven't made it yet you just haven't met that right person or met that right producer whatever it might be but like you are pretty freaking awesome and so he apparently from all the accounts that i read even though he was this nobody in chicago he believed that he was uh something in his mind that he was not in reality. He believed that he was the best in the world. He believed that it was going to happen. Just the stars didn't align or whatnot. And he acted that way too. Again, this nobody was acting like, Hey, I'm better than Nas and Jay-Z and all these other people. So to a lot of people, it, it seemed off base. Like, what is this guy who does he think he is? You know, he's just <laughs> like, he's, like, who does he think he is? He's just some rapper from, from a, a hood in Chicago. And, and so of course, now we know, we look back, this was 20 years ago. Kanye West did make it. He came out with his hit song. He took off from there, multi-platinum artist, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But the point is that that same belief, and that's why I said believe in it will come. Many people who know that they are good or they are talented and they have that mix of hard work, they still believe and they know it's going to happen. They just haven't really caught that break yet. And I feel like that's the best way to explain law of attraction. Law of attraction is not, you know, a five foot five person who's overweight believing, hey, I'm going to make the NBA one day and mm -hmm. uh, become the next Michael Jordan uh, you can keep dreaming, keep believing, but everyone around you will tell you, hey, you know, uh, you got no chance Absolutely, yeah. because you're just not a good player. <laughs> well, it has to be within the realm of possibility. And so, you know, some and it has to be in the, you know, we are spiritual beings living according to the laws of, you know, um, physics. And so we, you know, we have to... Um, you know, we have, we can only believe in reality what is actually, you know, um, possible for us. So you're right. You know, it's like you, um, you know, you can't be like, you know, it, I, I look at it like akin to somebody who, um, has, you know, been struggling with money. And they could barely even pay their rent and, you know, they, they make below minimum wage or minimum wage, um, sitting there saying, okay, you know, next month I'm going to manifest 
a million dollars, you know, or I'm going to win the lottery or I'm going to, um, you know, these kinds of things are just, you, you, yeah, may winning the lottery, want, yeah, you may want to believe that, but you don't believe it. You know, it's not, it's just not in the, it's, and it's, it's almost impossible to believe something like that is going to happen. Um, and, you know, and, and, and that's, you know, that's like a game of chance and it's not something that we really have control over. So you have to keep it within the reality of something that if I do these steps, then I will manifest this, you know what I mean? Um, and so it has to be within the realm of what you can control. Yeah, and and talking about like, there are examples of people who could like barely afford rent, and but they believed, hey, I know I'm going to get myself out of this situation because I'm working on this business and it's going really well, and I think this product is going to become the next big thing. There are countless examples of that, and when it comes to tech founders and just business people in in general. Uh, founders of fast food chains but if you're you know if if you're going to be at home you can't make rent and you think that you if you believe that you're going to win the lottery that's just a little there's a big difference between building a business and developing a product that the world needs and yeah. just thinking that the lottery is going to fall into your lap uh, an, another example that i like a friend of mine who was Probably top two most athletic people I've ever known personally. Good friend of mine, super athletic, played a college, uh, a college sport, played professionally. He got into a very bad accident, really bad. And I remember after the accident happened, I had quote unquote experts, like medical experts who are also friends of mine and this individual saying he's, you know, his, his life is pretty much over uh, for, from a physical perspective. Like he's never going to be able to walk again. He's never going to be able to be athletic again. He's, uh, he, he's just going to have to figure out a, a new life of like being in a wheelchair and living life in a wheelchair and knowing this guy. I mean, he was, always in the gym, spending countless hours every day in the gym, just an exercise freak. I, I After he was well enough, I talked to him, and, and he had this law of attraction mindset of, you know what, I, I'm just, I'm not going to listen to the medical experts because uh, I still have my mind, and I still believe that I can do something with my life physically. I may not be able to play tennis again. I may not be able to run as fast as I can or as I could. I may not be able to do a lot of things physically, but I truly believe that uh, I can go beyond just walking in, that I can do something pretty incredible. And I kept telling these mutual friends, I said, look, I'm not a doctor or anything, but I know this guy. I know his work ethic. I just don't believe the science. I don't believe all these diagnoses. Well, lo and behold, five years later, after the accident happened, uh, he entered into his, into a bodybuilding competition. And now he's won multiple bodybuilding competitions and is a professional bodybuilder. And again, this was a guy who, the doctors, the orthopedic surgeons, the neurosurgeons said, you're, the best case scenario is that you're going to be walking with a cane your entire life. Forget about lifting weights and becoming a body. Like, that's just pipe dream. So, if you believe, it will come. And this guy had all the tools to make that happen, given his background, his history. That's amazing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's countless stories like that. And it just, it really does come down to that. I, I totally agree with you. So what, okay, we've talked about law of attraction, drawbacks to the law of attraction, misnomers about it. Uh, 
I, I want to find out how hypnotism, I don't know if it's hypetalk.com or hiptalk.com, but it's, it's a- actually H-Y-P. hip talk. <laughs> hip talk, okay. It's H-Y-P talk.com h-y-p talk.com yeah you are a certified master hypnotist what is that what kind of training do you do and and tell us a little bit more about hypnotism is it what we hear about in in the documentaries and the movies like you can like tap into my mind and make me do stuff or is it something (laughs) different it's a little different than that i mean that's like sort of um the It's sort of the mythical, you know, way that uh, people explain hypnosis. But really what hypnosis is, it's a heightened state of suggestibility. That's the way I always describe it. And what that means is, you know, it's you get um, the critical thinking part of your mind um, out of the way um, in order to introduce uh, you know, better new ideas. It's kind of like getting a software upgrade. You know, you have this software in your subconscious part of your mind. It's like your inner part of your mind. That's like the operating system for how you act, how you, um, all your habits, all your emotions, how you typically think, how you view the world, all your filters. It's all in this, you know, subconscious part of your mind. And, you know, really when we talk about believing, you know, there's consciously believing something um, and thinking that you believe something, but then there's the subconscious. And that's that's what's really at play when you're manifesting and how you know what you believe. Take a look at the world around you, um, whatever you are seeing. Um you know, I mean, because there's actually billions of bits of data, billions with a B, billions of bits of data that we could focus on, that we could see, um, but we're only seeing a very small fraction of what's actually there. And so we're seeing based on those subconscious filters, based on what we believe, based on how we perceive the world to be. So if we see, you know... um, a bunch of idiots around us. Well, that's because that's what we believe. You know, if we see a bunch of smart people around us, that's because we, we tend to believe that, you know, people are, are intelligent. If we, um, you know, have a, uh, a nice, uh, cushy lifestyle, that's, that's there because we believe that, you know, we, um, are, you know, we deserve that and we can have that and we, we have the ability to have that. So what, so hypnosis, it's basically going in and rewiring, reprogramming that subconscious part of your mind. And, um, and you do that through a process of, um, you know, getting, uh, the mind into a peaceful, relaxed, tranquil state, um, uh, where it becomes open to, um, and receptive to those, uh, suggestions. And, um, so, you know, I mean, anything is basically possible in hypnosis for the, you know, for the most part within reason, um, you know, you know, um, reprogram your mind to, you know, lose weight, quit smoking, reduce stress, get a better job, lifestyle, whatever it is. Um, and so to me, that is, it's like almost a requirement when it comes to law of attraction to really, really get law of attraction to work. You've got to go in and you've got to do the uh, reprogramming. Um, how you become certified, um, you know, there's a ton of hypnosis schools um, I went to a hypnosis school, um, you know, back in 1998, 1999. Um, and, um, it just so happened that, you know, I had decided that I wanted to make recordings. Like I didn't even think that I was going to necessarily see people one on one. Um, I wanted to make meditative recordings and sell them on the internet. And that was going to be you know, my role in life. Um, but I did, I wasn't a hundred percent sure that I had the exact, um, formula for change. Um, I wanted to make sure that I knew that I knew what I was doing. And so I started doing a little search early on, you know, in the internet and, um, 
stumbled upon, you know, just through doing searches of like how to write a meditation script um, that's effective that, you know, um, I stumbled upon a hypnosis school. Uh, this is when I was living in Las Vegas. And literally at the moment that I Googled this, um, the next class was starting up in two weeks just down the street. And I was like, whoa, you know, there's actually a thing for this and I can actually go get certified. And so, um, it's, you know, it's a, it's like a 75 to a hundred hour, uh, course, um, to get certified. And so however that gets spread out, whether, you know, it's, uh, every day for, uh, eight hours a day, that's how I did it. Or, you know, sometimes it's like a weekly, uh, class. Sometimes it, you know, it's two weeks. Um, so it's just, you know, but it is, it's a, a certain number of hours that you need of learning about how, you know, the power of the mind works. And then to get, uh, that's for hypnosis. And then it's double that to get hypnotherapy. So the two are kind of different. Um, hypnosis is where you're just um, putting in, you know, it's like suggestions. It's, it's more like just direct suggestions, like hypnotizing somebody and giving them, you know, affirmations when they're, um, you know, when they're in hypnosis. Hypnotherapy takes it a little bit deeper. Hypnotherapy is where it's a lot of times you're going in and you're hypnotizing somebody and then you're asking them questions. So it's a little bit more therapy, like where you're just, you know, it's a two-way conversation and you can do some really cool things like, um, you know, do regression and, you know, and ask them, you know, about when these problems started or do like things like, uh, parts therapy where, you know, you uh, talk to the part of yourself that is responsible for the behaviors that you want to change, things like that. And um, so that's just, that's another certification. And uh, so, it, you know, it's, it's, um, it's just taking the certifications uh, classes, but then it's also, of course, pl- you know, practicing and getting, gaining confidence and, um, you know, learning through actual practical application. I think that now that you talk about hypnotherapy, having gone to therapy, counseling, seen many friends go through it, actually current friends going through it, unfortunately, uh, I, I feel like hypnotherapy is the only therapy that's, that's beneficial and worthwhile because a big problem when it comes, especially like couples counseling, a big problem is, uh, it's difficult to get people to open up in a, in a room like that and to share the true feelings and share everything. But I feel with the hypno side of it, you're getting everyone in that calm state to where they will open up and dissect and, and share and try to get to the root of, of the issues. That's just the first thing that came to mind after you gave this description. (laughs) Yeah, you know, it's definitely a good parallel. So I would make a distinction between, you know, like, like using hypnotherapy versus therapy is really, I I would say it's definitely a much more effective tool because you have way more access. You're going to make the change way quicker than, you know, spending a couple of years in therapy just to get access to that part of your mind. Um, cause normally a lot of, a lot of times, you know, people are hiding painful memories. They don't understand, um, where their problems came from or how to change them. And so hypnotherapy is to me definitely a better, you know, approach than, than therapy for the most part. You know, I, I, I'm sure that there's applications for therapy where, maybe hypnotherapy is not needed. I'm not sure what those would be, but I don't want to make a blanket statement like that. Now, as far as hypnosis versus hypnotherapy, um, I would say 90% of people's problems um, can be solved with just pure direct suggestions um, and, hip, you know, and hypnosis. Like you don't necessarily 
have to always get to the root or have to re-experience or reopen painful wounds or anything like that to make those changes. It's very rare that you actually need to do that. A lot of times, um, you know, you can just change your belief system um, by it's it's really just like rewiring the the subconscious mind to think about things in new different it's like it's like almost like creating a detour where like this is the way i used to act i used to go this way to work um but now there's a detour and i can't go that way anymore so i have to use these new resources and this new direction to get to work and eventually at, at when you know, when you visualize that or you hear suggestions that tell you to go this new way, you're going to end up going that new way. And so, you know, and, and you don't necessarily need to know why that road's closed, you know, or why that road doesn't work anymore. Um, you just like go the new way. And so I think, you know, um, hypnosis, just, you know, just to clarify that for people, you know, I mean, hypnosis, um, is a wonderful, wonderful tool to, um, you know, create all kinds of amazing changes. But yeah, like if you're dealing with, you know, things like childhood trauma, that kind of thing, yeah, definitely hypnotherapy is the way to go. But if you want to make, um, you know, just new, you know, uh, habits of behavior in your life, you want more motivation, you want more confidence, you want to manifest things, um, then, you know, hypnosis, you know, it's a lighter approach, um, but it's just as effective. I feel like I need to find some hypnotists or and hypno, hypnotherapists close by to where I live now. And I want to tell my friends, I'm going to share this interview with them. I mean, I, I hate saying this, but I feel like you brought up that word 90%. I feel like 90% of counselors and therapists are or trash. They just got some designation. They throw it on a website and say, yeah, come to me as a patient. And they're just not very effective. Uh, in fact, I think some of them cause more harm than, than help hate trashing the space. But, uh, now that you say this, um, I'm fully on board. This, this is, it seems more holistic and like you're getting more in touch with with yourself, which is not always the case. Well, you know, and, and again, I mean, I think that talk therapy is fine. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to, you know, put down or trash any, (laughs) anyone's profession. Um, you know, I, I just think in a lot of cases, um, you know, just being a hypnotherapist and understanding, you know, it's like, you just kind of have, full power, you know, like full access, you know, you have access to the full mind, you know, because the, you know, um, subconscious mind is 90% of your mind, whereas the conscious mind, which is what you're utilizing during um, therapy is, is only, uh, 10% of your mind. Now, that being said, you know, um, I do coaching and, you know, we, you know, sometimes we, we, uh, just talk. And I think that just talking sometimes is very, very effective because sometimes you just need to talk. Um, but, you know, if it gets to the point where like it's taking, um, a year, you know, to get to the root of the problem, you're not getting anywhere, then it's really time to like consider, all right, let's get full access, you know, to the whole mind um, and start to actually dive in and get to the root of the problem where the programs are stored. And so that's where I think, you know, they definitely can work uh, together and they can both be effective. Um, but yeah, you know, hypnotherapy, no doubt about it. Hypnosis, hypnotherapy gives you full access. That's Victoria Gallagher. Check out her number one bestselling book, Practical Law of Attraction. Align yourself with the manifesting conditions and successfully attract your desires as well as 
her new book, which you said you wrote with your cat or yeah. your cat inspired you. What is, what is that called again? That one's called, um, my, and it's, it's launching this Monday, which I guess is the 12th. Um, it's called my cat secret to manifesting, unlocking law of attraction with your magnetic power. I like to think of it as velvet. Um, and I channeled a lot of the information through velvet and, and in our, you know, in our meditations, we sit in my meditation, uh, studio every morning and he joins me for meditation. And so I really kind of feel like, you know, I, I kind of like to think of it like a lot of these ideas. Um, you know, I, I came, I came about these ideas by watching him and getting inspired by him and, um, you know, so I would say he kind of channeled the book to me a little bit. Very cool. The website is hiptalk.com, H-Y-P talk.com, Victoria M. Gallagher.com, Victoria M. G-A-L-L-A-G-H-E-R.com. And there's also personal growth club.com, Victoria. Any other final thoughts you want to share with our listeners or anything else you want to promote? You know, that's basically it. Um, also watch for my Believe Hypnosis app, which is going to have like a thousand, um, hypnosis, uh, sessions right in the palm of your hand. That's coming, um, right in, right in the middle of July. Watch for that. Um, but you know, it's, it really is. I just want to, uh, thank you and your listeners for listening. Um, I just want you to know that like, you know, whatever ideas you have for yourself, for your life, if you have a glimpse of, you know, some form, some version of you, um, that version is meant for you. And all you need to do is, um, you know, align yourself, um, with, you know, the manifesting conditions for having that version, you know, your thoughts, your feelings, your beliefs, your actions, and, and it can be yours. And so never, ever, ever give up on your dreams. Um, just become the best you and align with the best you, and you can have the life that you desire. Victoria Gallagher, thank you so much for joining us on the Work From Home Show. To all of our listeners, check us out at workfromhomeshow.com. That's www.workfromhomeshow.com. Get on our mailing list there. You can follow us on social media, Twitter, Facebook. Just type in Work From Home Show. You will find us. If you have any questions or thoughts, email us. Hello at workfromhomeshow.com. That's hello at workfromhomeshow.com. And until next week. Keep on working from home.